Kicking it with Gives a Minute on Kick. Hey, Kick! What's cracking? How is it, Kick Machine? Who the hell is Leo Sayer? Anybody know who this man is? Leo Sayer? This album? I've never heard... Okay, rephrase. I've never heard this gentleman's music. That's going to change today. 
I bought the album. Why did I buy the album if I've never heard the guy's music? Well, this was part of the... Hello there. Hello there. Who did that? Hendrik, how you doing? Oh, shit. Hope you play something good like Pink Floyd, The Wall, Net TV. It's in the title of the stream. Leo Sayers. So what? Are you saying Leo Sayers no good? Do you know this album? The album's called Living in a Fantasy. And I bought this as a bundle. Paid $20 for a whole bunch of vinyl. Gee, I feel like it was a year ago now. And we haven't done a virtual vinyl stream in a little while because my YouTube channel got a ding. Got a Not a copyright ding either, a community strike. Um, and so I wanted to play it cool until three months passed when the strike gets erased. So the strike has been erased. I am live on YouTube. I have my email account that's linked to that YouTube open so that when we do play this vinyl, if anything gets flagged, I will just stop the YouTube stream immediately. But we are also obviously on Kick. Come on over to kick.com slash gives a minute if you want to partake in the chat like Net TV. Uh, and Hendrik so far. Just two. Uh, is Charlotte there? No, I don't think Charlotte's there. Gloria's there. Uh, I remember Leo Sayer. He wasn't too bad to my ear. Well, I've got to be freaking honest here. I only bought this because it was part of the $2 part of the $20 bundle, and I've always heard of the guy's name. So I thought, why not? What could go wrong? Originally priced at $29.99, reduced to $8.99, and then part of this bundle for 20 bucks features more than I can say. Leo Sayer's new album. Now, I'd argue that it's not new, but when it came out, it would have been 1980. Chrysalis Records, England, manufactured, distributed under license by Festival Records in Australia. So this is a reissue or an Australian issue of a UK artist. I see it on the DLive title. Thanks, man. Let me, um, you know what? Let's learn about the guy first, eh? Let's freaking learn about the guy. Let's go to the Google machine and search up Leo Sayer. Leo Sayer. Okay, he's still alive by the look of it. Uh, in the news, he's been in hospital. He's 75 years of age. Wow. You know what? Let's go to the Wikipedia. Here we go. Wikipedia says Leo Sayer. His real name, Gerard Hugh Sayer. I wonder how he got Leo out of Hugh. Born 21st of May, 48, an English-Australian singer-songwriter. I guess he was born in England and moved to Australia. That might be why we have this in local Australian op shops. Uh, been an Aussie citizen and resident since 2009. Sayer launched his career in the UK in the early 70s, became a top singles and album act on both sides of the Atlantic in the 70s. His first seven hit singles in the United Kingdom all reached top 10. A feat first accomplished by his first manager, Adam Faith. Songs have been sung by other notable artists, including Cliff Richard, Roger Daltrey, and Three Dog Night. Born and brought up in Shoreham by Sea in Sussex to Thomas E. G. Sayer and the former Teresa Nolan as the second of three sons, Michael and Brian. His father was English. Mother was born in Maguiresbridge. Maguire's Bridge, County Fermanagh, 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 Northern Ireland, raised on her father's small farm. Where he was raised on her father's small farm. Huh? Is that a typo? He was raised on her father's. He was raised on his father's small farm in Endonmore. Townland near Hamlet of Kilsher. Sayer attended St. Peter's Catholic Primary School in Shoreham by Sea, then blessed Robert Southall, now awesome, blah, bling, bong, blang, before study, Sayer went to school. Initially discovered by musician David Courtney, who then co managed and co produced with him his former pop singer Adam Faith, that was his manager. In January of 67, while he was 18 years old, Sayer was working as a hall porter at the King's Hotel in Hove. He assisted in the rescue of an elderly guest from a serious fire that damaged the hotel's first floor. 
He himself was rescued from the Blazing Hotel by buildings working. Okay, so he's a bit of a fire as well. Uh, that was when he was 18. Uh, his music career began co-writing songs with David Courtney, including Giving It All Away, which gave Roger Daltrey of The Who his first solo hit in 73. That same year, Sayer began his career as a recording artist under the management of Adam Faith. Signed Sayer to the Chrysalis... Chrys... 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 Chrysalis. Chrysalis. So how you say that word? Chrysalis? Chrysalis. Chrysalis. Uh, so that's what we've got here from this record. It's on the Chrysalis label. His debut single, Why Is Everybody Going Home?, failed to chart, but he achieved nationwide prominence in the UK with his second single, the music hall styled song, The Show Must Go On. Sayer performed it on British television wearing a period costume and makeup. Single went on to number two in the UK, as did his debut album, Silverbird. Co-written, co-written with David Courtney, also co-produced the album, uh, with Adam Faith, Three Dog Nights cover the group's last Billboard hit, reached number four in 74. Subsequent swing singles, all major hits in the UK, One Man Band, Long Tall Glasses, Moonlighting, uh, I Am the Walrus, he covered The Beatles, Let It Be, The Long Winding Road, okay. His albums this period were also consistently successful. So he's had a lot of bangers by the sound of it. How come I've never heard of him? How come I've never heard him more accurately? Uh, he also garnered success as an album artist in the United States. His second LP, Just a Boy in 74, one year before I was born, reached number 16. His fourth album, Endless Flight in 76, reached number four also. Bob, what was that noise? I don't know. I don't care. Uh, it also charted in the Netherlands, New Zealand, and platinum in the UK and the States, and double platinum in Canada. The peak of his career came in 77. He achieved two consecutive number one hits in the States. First with the disco style, You Make Me Feel Like Dancing. Now that sounds familiar. You make me feel like dancing. Or do I just think I know that song? Sounds familiar. Feels familiar. Um, followed by a romantic ballad, When I Need You which reached number one in both the United Kingdom and the United States. So written by Albert Hammond and Carol Bayer Sega. So it's not, he's not writing. Okay. Okay. In 1979, the compilation album, The Very Best of Leo Sayer, uh, it became Sayer's first UK number one. Took him a while to get to number one on his in his home country. Uh, and that was his seventh consecutive UK Top 20 album. Say a guest starred in the second episode of the third season of The Muppet Show and performed You Make Me Feel Like Dancing. Okay. Sayer also made cover versions of Bobby V's Sonny Curtis, Jerry Allison composition, More Than I Can Say, and Buddy Holly's Raining In My Heart, and a few others there as well. The soundtrack to the French-Belgian animated film The Missing Link in 1980. Uh, he voiced Dan the Forest Ranger in The Raccoons on Ice. Okay. He's done a lot of work with The Raccoons. In 1990, so he's jumped forward a few years, his last studio collaboration between Alan Parsons and Eric Wolfson, the album Freudian, performing I Am A Mirror. Bingo, bango. Financial difficulties. Do we want to read all about this? After a decade of success, his career suffered repeated setbacks due to a series of financial legal problems. His first wife, Janice, divorced in 85. Financial disclosures revealed Adam Faith had badly mishandled, mishandled Sayer's business. Oh, shit. Manager took all the money. Uh-oh. So Sayer sued him for mismanagement, and the case was eventually Hello settled. There. Hello there, tooth boy. Hey, Luke. How you doing, man? Uh, he sued and was settled out of court. Uh, the payout of 650,000 that's not euro at that point is it that's pound that's quid that's a lot of money in the early 1990s his career stalled again when he fought a protracted but ultimately successful legal battle against his label Ooh, oh shit okay i wonder how that i wonder how he won that because you sign a record label you pretty much know what you're signing but i guess he didn't and he won 
In 96, Sayer sued his new management after he discovered that his pension fund had allegedly been mismanaged to the tune of around a £1 million. Well, shit. Despite spending more than 90000 in legal fees, the case never made it to court and Sayer abandoned the suit for reasons of cost. Okay, he assembled a band led by former Van Morrison guitarist Ronnie Johnson and toured his way back to financial security. Oh, that's cool. Uh, they recorded a live album, Live in London. Latest career. In 2006, Sayer made a return to number one in the UK singles chart. Uh, a remix of Thunder in My Heart. It was first appearance in the United Kingdom Top 10 for 24 years. Okay. In Australia, here we go. In June 20, 2008, Sayer released a new album only in Australia. Don't wait until tomorrow. This album was produced by Gareth or Garth Porter from the Aussie pop band Sherbet. Okay. Released by Universal Music, features selections from his catalogue rearranged with strings. That's probably why he wanted to get the um, the rights back so he could reissue this this stuff. So in twenty in January of two thousand nine, he became an Australian citizen, having lived in Sydney, my hometown, since two thousand five. Yeah, he's appeared in various television shows, including the Celebrity Big Brother UK, Aussie television comedy Stupid Stupid Man. I don't remember that. Released, released a new album in 2015 called Relest, Restless Years, touring Australia and Singapore. All right, okay, okay. Okay. 2019, he released another album, Selfie, on Demon Records, recorded in Queensland. Okay. Personal life. Uh, he fit, met his first wife, Janice, married in 73, divorced in 85. Relationship with Donatella Picnitti. Piccanetti, who with he moved to Australia with, they separated in 2007, reunited and married in 2023. Sayer resides in the southern highlands of New South Wales. Well, does he now? Yo, Sayer! Hey! That's not far from here. Not far at all, actually. In January 2009, Sayer became an Aussie citizen on Australia Day citizenship, blah, bling, bling, bling. Health problems. He still suffers from effects of injuries to his legs and ankles caused by the fall of a stage in 77. Oh, shit. His family has a history of cancer. Both his parents died of cancer, as did other family members. On his 65th birthday, experiencing intestinal problems, Sayer was given a colonoscopy. Coscopy, colon colonoscopy which revealed he had intestinal ulcers and a tumor. He underwent surgery, successfully treated both problems. Okay. Now, here we go, the discography. So the album we have here, folks, is his album, Living in a Fantasy. This looks like it comes in at album number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is his eighth album. Now, this is what we're going to be playing today, so let's learn about it. Living in a Fantasy is the eighth album by the English singer-songwriter Leo Sayer, released in August of 1980. I was all of five years of age. Although the album was not a huge commercial success, the single that it spawned, a cover version of Bobby V's More Than I Can Say, spent five weeks at number two on the Billboard Hot Chart. Okay, certified gold by the Record Industry of Australia. No, America. Recording Association of America, RIAA, spent three weeks at number one on the Billboard Adult Contemporary Chart. In the UK, it peaked number two. Two weeks atop the Kent Music Report in Australia. Who the hell's Kent? The Kent Music Report. Okay, Kent. Kenny boy. Uh, Sayer has stated that while looking for an oldie to record for Living in a Fantasy, he saw a TV commercial for a Greatest Hits compilation by V and chose the song on the spot. We went into a record store that afternoon and bought the record, had the song recorded that night. Wow. Track listing, which is what I could read off here. Time Ran Out On You, written by Alan Tani. Uh, Where Did We Go Wrong, written by Leo Sayer, track two. You Win I Lose, also written by Sayer, track three. More Than I Can Say, not written by Sayer, but that's track four on side one. Millionaire, written by Sayer, closes side one. Track five. Track uh, side two, Once in a While. Uh, track two, Living in a Fantasy, written by Sayer. Uh, track three, She's Not Coming Back, also written by Sayer. 
Track four, let me know. Track five, only Foolin. So 10 tracks in totes. Who's the producer here? Uh, Leo Sayer plays guitar, harmonica, and vocals. Nick Glennie Smith plays keys. Trevor Spencer plays drums. Alan Tani plays bass. Also some guitar, keyboards, and vocals. Who produced this album? Alan Tani. So the producer wrote a lot of the tracks by the look of it. Now, why would a producer get credits on a song unless he wrote it? I mean, the producer produces. Looks like he also wrote a fair bit. Alan Tani. Alan Tani gets shit. One, two. He gets joint credits. He gets full credits on one track, two tracks. He gets full credits on three out of ten tracks and du and dual credits on a bunch of others. Yo, Hendrik, how you doing, man? Kent Music was a record store in Brisbane. They stopped hard to get alternative albums and singles. G'day, Kent. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, mixed by Ashley Howe, uh, assisted by David Kemp, mastered by Johnny Dent. Art directed by Peter Wagg. Now, the art on this is a pretty dubious. i got to say, I don't really like this artwork. I don't know what you think of that. I don't know. I think that's shit, to be frank. I don't... Uh, I mean, I bought it. I, I, I mean, it worked. I bought it because I saw the name and I, I guess I was startled by the artwork, but I don't know. It looks, it looks lame. It looks like the 80s, and, you know, I don't know. Nothing wrong with the 80s, but I don't know. I just don't like it. Personal taste, you might like it, but I don't. And of course, you're wrong and I'm right. We all know that. Uh, Luke, I've never heard of this album or artist. So I've never heard the album either. I've only heard of the art, uh, the um, the artist. So this chart peaked in Australia at number 12. In the UK, it topped at 15. In the US, at 36. Now, what I love to do here is to look at this exact piece of vinyl I've got in my hands. I also want cookies. So I think it's important just for the sake of like, you know, like documentation and preserving to observe what version of the record I've got here. We already know it's from Chrysalis Records, but it's also the Australian version. So what I like to do is open up Discogs and go through and find out what this piece of vinyl is worth. More than likely, because it's an Australian release, it's worth jack shit, but we don't know. So let's go over to Discogs and see what they have to say. So it's a master release. So look, there's 808 copies of this and the maximum price <laughs> is 17 cents. <laughs> so let's just verify that which version I've got here. Leo Sayer, uh, we want to see all of his discography. Ah, that's going to stop there. Okay, I didn't want to do that. I guess, okay, so living in a fantasy. That's too big. That's why it's going like that. Uh, the versions. How many versions of this are there? Here are 55 different versions of this. So we want to find the exact version we've got in our little hot hands here. I guess I'll open it up and have a look. Is there an inner sleeve? There is. There's an inner sleeve here. I guess that'll have more. That's got production uh, details. Doesn't have lyrics. Oh, it's got lyrics here. Okay, we can read along as we as we play. Uh, controlled in Australia and New Zealand by ATV Northern. I guess it's, it'll be on the actual record what we need to find. And I have given this a wet clean because this is obviously quite an old piece of vinyl so i've given it a wet clean already it should be good to roll so side one does it tell us any pertaining information such as barcode number there's a trumpet nice and early thank you for that um 33 rpm that's good to know i've already got it on 33 cool so the barcode numbers is SMX56697 skins. What does that tell us? SMX? We'll scroll down till we see an SMX. Scandinavian. I guess we should just look for the Aussie ones to start with. Germany, Mexico, UK, Philippines, US, US, Venezuela, Portugal, US, 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 Greece, Benelux. I've never even heard of that place. US, Ireland, New Zealand. Canada, South Korea, US, Taiwan, 
Germany, Australia. That's oh, a cassette. Oh, shit. Remember those things, folks? Yugoslavia, Brazil, Australia. Okay, so what is this? EMI. Oh, that's a CD. We don't want a CD. We want vinyl. Can we just, can we scrub just by vinyl? I only want to see vinyl. Title, format, label, catalog, year. Okay, we'll just go that way. We'll go that way, Australia. So, oh no, there's a better number. Yeah, the L number, L37-374. This is it, folks. The first one here, chrysalisus, chrysalisus, chrysalis, L37374. But mine's got a comma in it. L37, comma, 37. This is literally this one right here. This is exactly what? What did that go to? Oh, you suck. That just went. What did that do? I'm not like some madman. Nah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I nah. love it. Nah. Well, this is the one, folks. This is the one here. What does that drop down say? Okay. There's 16 of these for sale at the moment uh, from $3.90. The highest this has ever sold is for 11 Australian dollars. That's the exact version of this album, Chrysalis L37-374, the vinyl album, released in 1980, genre pop style ballad. I've got to sign up to um, Discogs and add mine to all this stuff, but yeah, this is it. This is the exact version that I've got in my hands. Now, when I see that it sold for $11, I think, well, that's not too bad, considering, you know, I got it for a... I got it as part of a, I guess, a 10... Was it 10 pieces of vinyl for 20, 20 bucks? So I'm pretty stoked to have it. So what I think we should do... Hey, Made in USA, how you doing, man? Better, I just bought my third piece of lightning gear made in Australia by Entech. Cool. Cool, Entech. I don't know that, that brand. I want to go and get a coffee, and then I want to play side one of this album with you, Yahoos. Does that sound good? Um, I'm getting up super early tomorrow for work, so this stream won't be a booze, booze hound stream. This will just be a gentle coffee, one album, and then I'm going to bed. I've got to get up at 1, out of the house at 2, start work at 3 a.m., so I'm not, I'm not raving and ranting all hours of the night tonight. If you want to hang out, though, and listen to Leo Sayers living in a fantasy with me, that'd be great. I'm going to go and grab that coffee. I'll be right back. I'm not like some madman. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it.
precipitation. Ah, Dudski's in the house. Yo, Doug, have you heard of Leo Sayer? Hope you have. CompTech, how you doing? Gives, do you have a drip coffee maker? Yes, that's what I did just then. That's that's where this came from. That's why it took a little longer than usual. By the way, where is everybody gone? I can't see a thing without these glasses on. It's really getting bad, by the way. I gotta basically they've got to be on all the time in front of the computer. So um, yeah, like I said before, we haven't done a virtual vinyl stream for a while because I did get a community uh, that what are they called on YouTube? A um, I got a strike. Community guidelines strike a Rooney. Dude, I've got crickets in my room. Hear this. Hear this. Hold on. Now they stopped. Who poured me a beer then? Anyway, there's crickets bur chirping over there. Um, yeah, so what I've got, I've got my email open. The email address that's linked to my YouTube channel is open right next to me. If we start playing this record and I get dinged, I will just stop the stream on YouTube. So I see three viewers on YouTube. Hello, YouTube. You're good to be there, but it might get yep. it might get yanked. If it does get yanked, you can come over to um, kick.com slash gives a minute where the stream will continue. And then at that point, I'll also upload the VOD back to YouTube with the songs removed. But as it stands, I don't want to get another community guidelines strike. You should have drips a minute break along along with your slash a minute. I was thinking of changing that. I don't know. Uh, is it cool to be telling everybody I'm going to the toilet when I'm actually just going to get a coffee? I don't know. Either way, it is what it is. Uh, this is the album here. Leo Sayer. I just Say farted. I just farted. Who did that? Luke. Leo Sayer, Living in a Fantasy, Side 1 Skins. Let's put this on the turntable, give it a bit of a dust off. I have given it a wet clean, but we'll give it a bit of a clean up as well. The turntable. Let's crank this up. We'll slide this on here. Like that. I'll give it a bit of a dust down. Now, for those that are new here, when we play records, um, I kill my microphone and I jump in the chat with you. So I'll bring the chat over so I can type with you guys in the chat because we just want to hear the tune. We don't want to hear the music. Yo, Dugski, Melbourne, uh, Dugski, Leo lives in Sydney. No, he doesn't actually. He lives in the Southern Highlands, which is a stone's throw from here. Um, we did see that. I, 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 I read that about him moving to Australia in 2007, but he lives in the Southern Highlands, uh, which is even closer than, than, than that. So um, side one of this album, get that out of here. Side one starts with Time Ran Out On You. I guess the track we're looking towards is the track four, More Than I Can Say, which is his most notable song from this album, but it's a cover of a guy called Bobby V. Uh, so there's one, two, three, four, five songs on this side. I'll type the names of the songs into the chat as we progress. Let's crank up Leo Sayer from the album Living in a Fantasy from 1980, if I remember correctly, 1980. Leo Sayer. Enjoy, folks. Cheers.
Well, there you go. The side one closing number from the album Living in a Fantasy by Leo Sayer. That was Millionaire. Interesting little side snippet there. That is the second longest track on the album. Most of these songs are in the three minute region. That one clocks in at 422. And then the longest song on the album is coming up on side two. Uh, track two, Living in a Fantasy, the title track to the album, uh, comes in at 425. What I found notable about those songs, they all kind of sounded pretty similar to me. Um, seemed like it was, it's, don't take this the wrong way. It seemed quite tame. Like, I mean, it's his eighth album. I don't know what his first album was like or what his 10th album was like, but I would have thought if you've gone through eight records to, to this point, you're a well-established musician, there might have been something intriguing or something really cool and new and different, but this just sounds kind of a bit blasé. And and there was stuff in there that's good. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's just a little bit boring. Like not not... Yeah, nothing that's going to go, oh, wow, man, this guy's got an awesome talent. It's just like, okay, he filled that he filled that void of kind of radio-friendly commercial pop songs. Well done. Uh, you learned something. Yeah, and by the way, Hendrik, thank you. Uh, we were checking, you know, I was just checking my Gmail to make certain that uh, we don't get copy dinged on YouTube and Gmail refreshes as new email comes in. You haven't got to refresh your trousers. It just comes in automatically. Um, so side one. I mean, refresh me, is side one of an album usually the better side? Because, I don't know, people don't get all the way into the deep cuts of side two. It's not that difficult to flip the record over, is it? But people always go side one first and they go, oh, I'm not going to play side two. I don't know. Hopefully there's some in more interesting songs on side two. The credits on side two are much the same as before. Um I just thought there might have been some additional writing credits that might have given the songs a bit more guts. I don't know. In the chat, I just want to comment on what um, Made in USA said. This is really cool. I dig the live listening to records. Thank you, dude. I appreciate you saying that. And I dig it too. The reason I like it is because, well, a tangible physical record is different than just playing an MP3 file in the middle of a cap game or a Wieners game. Having a record here that we've learnt about, we've gone and checked out and we've done some research and we've discovered some things, it's more than just the music at that point. It's a bit of history, a bit of, you know, it's putting things into uh, the chronological order of of life, I suppose. And yeah, we found out this guy lives up the road, you know? Isn't that interesting? I did, when I bought this, maybe that's why this was in our uh, cashies, but when I bought this, I had no idea this guy lived in the Southern Highlands. And, and, and we only found that out here because we streamed. Love it. Um, Made in USA. Apparently the average song length has been getting longer and longer over the years. Yeah, and on the money. Thank you, dude. Hendrix says no. No in regards to what? I can't recall what that was in no to. Uh, it's learning about time and culture. Right on, right on. I've got to sneeze here. Give me a second to... Yahoo! Ah! Ah, get that out of there. Well, let's continue on the madness. Uh, the madness. Let's continue on with the album. Side two of the album, Living in a Fantasy. By the way, that's the uh, inner sleeve there. He looks pretty styling. And that should, this should have been the cover image. Hey, that's way better than that. That should have been the cover image. Uh, I always thought his name was Leo Slayer. Have I been saying it wrong? No, it's Leo Sayer. You know what, though? Leo Slayer would make it a lot more interesting if it was. Let's flip the record over and crank up side two skins. Be very careful. I usually drop this right about now. Didn't drop it. Leo Sayer. Living in a Sayer. Living in a fantasy side two skins. This album or this side opens with once in a while. Hey, by the way, that track, um, the cover by Bobby V or the Bobby V cover, more than I can say. Yeah, I made the comment in the chat. Uh, we read about that. He, when they were recording this album, he wanted to put an what he called an older song. Like He, he knew he wanted to cover an older song. And the story goes that he heard that song on the radio 
and they immediately went out to a record store, bought what would have been the single of the, the song, recorded it that night. So they got that idea, heard the song, bought the album, came home, recorded their own version of it in one day. Now, I'm not sure if that's the recording that made it to here. That could have been a demo recording, but either way, he was very inspired to cover Bobby V's More Than I Can Say. Let's crank up side two, folks. Once in a while is how it opens. What you got for us, Leo Slayer. Of course, it's not Slayer, it's Sayer. Kind of wish it was, though. I didn't clean it. Shit, I did it before anyway. Don't worry. I, I'm just going to stop it there because I I've, I didn't spray it. I did give this a wet clean before, but there was an almighty skip right at the start of this song, and I figured, what's the harm in just stopping it and starting it again? No harm. Let me just give it a good blow through, give the needle a bit of a... There was a pretty big skip there. So big that I typed the word dang in the chat, and it came out as sang, which all obviously means dang. You are recording this. What do you mean recording? I'm streaming. I mean, I always have a VOD if that's what you're asking. What about, get a bit, bit of a clean there as well, eh? Oh. All right, let's take two here, folks. Leo Sayer, side two of the album, living in a fantasy, starting out with track Once in a While Skins. No skips, please, Leo. I thought you might be backing up the recording of these albums. Oh, I do that in my own time, not while I'm streaming. Hell no, dude.
well, there you go, folks. Side two concludes with Only Fallen. That is the album Living in a Fantasy from Leo Sayer. Now, as that was playing, I was researching because I found it intriguing that a lot of the credits here were to the producer who also played bass on the album and keyboards, a gentleman by the name of Alan Tarney. So a lot of these songs are credited to him, if not him alone, Leo Sayer, comma, Tani. So that's intriguing. And I, and the only reason it's intriguing is because when, you know, just trying to relate it back to me or whatever, but when we were in LA recording El Pistolero, there was no bass player in Tracer. And so therefore in the credits to that album, you see Michael Rhodes as the bass player, but he wasn't the producer. This guy, Alan Tani, was the guy behind the the knobs doing all the twiddling and he also got on and played keys and bass so i was thinking well was he a mate of leo sayers and therefore was he on the album before or was he on the album after so i went back and i checked out the album in 1979 called here he's not on that album so then i went forward from living in a fantasy which is in 1980 to the next album 82's world radio doesn't feature alan tani on bass he's not even there so then I was like, well, what happened to Alan Tani? Who the hell is he? Where did he go? I checked out his profile. Well, he's the English record producer born in Workington, Cumberland, spent most of his teenage years in Adelaide, Australia. Get the hell out of here. Uh, best known for his association with Cliff Richard and producing Take On Me by Aha. 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 So that's where he comes from. I guess it's not important, but I, I just like going down that little rabbit hole of investigations because, yeah, like if you go and get an album produced by someone, I don't know, like, well, where, where was Leo Sayer's other bass player from the previous album? What happened to that guy? How come? Oh, I forgot that plastic thing over there. Yeah. How come the bass player, you know, like, I don't know, like, I guess it was different back in the 70s, you know, they're not really touring. Oh, they are touring. I don't know. It's just intrigue. It's interesting to me. It might not be interesting to you, but I was reading all about that and I got intrigued. So I thought I went down the rabbit hole. What did you guys think? Uh, in the chat, uh, you guys talking about charting Australian acts, Melbourne Doug, yeah, talking about Kylie Minogue. Good game. This was great. Some songs were hit, some were missed. No way. Yeah. So on that note, um, I, I thought that this second side to this album it seemed like a little bit more experimental, a little bit more free flowing. Like for starters, we heard him really letting go with his vocals. Like he, he, he did some interesting backing vocals of his own vocal, which I thought, well, maybe that happened on the first side and I just didn't catch it, but it, it was more notable on the second side that this kind of stuff came up where he kind of like, you know, let loose, if you like, as loose as that sounded. I mean, it was still pretty tame, but it, it was certainly a little bit more loose what was that track that stood out to me? She's Not Coming Back was interesting. And the title track, Living in a Fantasy, that that could have been the single. I like that. She's Not Coming Back. That was pretty interesting. I preferred side B. Yeah, yeah. Of of the, the two sides, definitely side two was the, was the banger for me. Uh, all told, an interesting record and certainly worth the $2 or so, whatever it was, in terms of what I paid for it. Um, I'm stoked I picked it up. And yeah, I'm glad we listened to it. I I will say this, I probably won't go searching out Leo Sayer's other work. If it comes my way, then sure, I'll take a listen, but I won't be digging in trying to find any more Leo Sayer. Even though he lives up a ways, uh, maybe I'll go and knock on his door, but I won't be doing that. Of course I will not. He's an old, how old is he now these days? Let's see. He was born in, go back, go back in time. Where is he? Uh, Leo Sayer, born, he is born in 1948. That would make him 76, born in 48. He'd, he'd be 75, no, 74, either 74 or 76. I'm not very good with maths, but got to play the locals. <laughs> well, look, um, yeah, and by the way, I didn't get a single ding from Chrysalis's records. Chrysalis or what's the other? What? Chrysalis Records in England, manufactured and distributed by Festival Records in Australia. 
Yeah, Chris, it's Chrysalis and Festival Records. Did I say that? I did. So I didn't get any dings, so that's cool. Um, but yeah, i got to be up stupidly early uh, tomorrow, so I'm going to get out of here. Um, and uh, I'll see you guys. Oh, well, thank, thanks thanks for being here. And I did see Shyla in the YouTube chat. Shyla, I caught you there. Thanks for um, sending stories with V over uh, to kick. I don't think he turned up, but appreciate you. Uh, she said she was cleaning and listening through YouTube, so I appreciate you. And uh, thanks for everybody else being here in the chat. Good to, good to chat with you lovely yahoos. And if it wasn't for work tomorrow, I'd be uh, sticking around and having a good old time. But uh, I've got to be up before a lot of you have even gone to bed. So I'm going to be going to bed very soon. And I'll catch you all on the flip side throughout the week. Shit me. Now that was frightening. Dang. Thanks, H-Man. Kicking it with Gives a Minute on Kick.